oh my, 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 have we had church around here this week or have we had church? Such a wonderful spirit, the spirit of the Lord, such a wonderful presence. Thanks be unto God. I believe that word. Do you believe that word? I'm looking forward with anticipation, with expectation. Better. Things are going to be better with me in mind than they've ever been. Than they've ever been. Glory to God. Glory to God. How can you tell if you believe something? You get excited. <laughs> Talking about the good words of the Lord. If you believe them, you will get excited every time. How many have had some good things happen in your past? You've had some great and good things happen. How about better? <laughs> Sign you up? <laughs> How about better? Better than the best you've ever had. Better than the best you've ever experienced. Can God do that? Yes. Is he big enough to do that? Yes. Is he good enough to do yes. that? Yes. yes. So I'm looking for it. And the Bible said, seek, you shall find. Look for it, you'll find it. Whew. So the rest of the service, on the way out, tomorrow, just look at somebody and go, better. Yeah. <laughs> better. <Yeah. laughs> better. Better. Yeah. Better than it's ever been. Better than it's ever been. <laughs> Won't be long. This is not just Keith talking now. Won't be long. People sitting here, people watching by the internet, people watching this broadcast later, whose situation has been dire. Their family, their friends, their co-workers know how stressful and how dire it has been. But in not many days hence, they'll ask them, well, how goes it? How is it? And with a smile, they'll say, it's better than it's ever been. It's better than it has ever been. Oh! Hey! Glory to God. Glo oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It'll be so with the physical body. It'll be so with marriages. It'll be so with children. And it'll be so with finances. Glory to God. Do you believe it, my friends? Do you believe it? <laughs> they'll, they'll know what hell you've been through. They'll know how hard it has been. And they'll look with pathos and they'll say with a kind tone, how is it? <laughs> and what they know not is that miracles have happened. Mir miracles have happened. Miracles have happened. Praise you. <laughs> oh. And they'll look back with light in their eyes and with joy and such heartfelt gratitude in their heart. And they'll say, Brother, it's better than it has ever been, ever been. It's never been this good. 
at its best, it was never this good. <laughs> better, 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 better than it's ever been. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. We believe it. We receive it. We say, be it unto us according to thy word. Be it unto me. Be it unto mine according to thy word. So cry no more. Pine and fear and worry no more. Count it done. Count the victory won. This night and this day, say, I have heard the word of the Lord. I have received the victory word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. <laughs> and it will be so, it will be true unto you. Hallelujah. Say it one more time, better. 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 Better, better than it's ever been. Better than it's ever been. Glory to God. All right. You can be seated if you can. <laughs> Man, I'm glad I came tonight. How about you? Ooh, thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Master. Oh, Lord, you're so faithful, so gracious. You do all things perfectly well. Oh, thank you, Lord. You're so gracious to us. Even when we've messed up, missed it, and come short, still, you are gracious, and you meet us anyway, and you forgive, and you bless and allow us to be promoted and used in spite of it all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Friends, we, we have a lot to be thankful for. God is good to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. <laughs> if you didn't bring your Bible tonight, hold up your hand. Ushers have extra Bibles. We'd be glad to let you use one of ours. Thanks be unto Jesus, our wonderful Master. You know we'll see him soon. Did you know that? Soon and very soon. We will be together with him. Hallelujah. We walk with him by faith now. He's in us. He's with us by his spirit. But soon and very soon, your eyes will see his face. Glory to God. And you'll know in a moment that everything you ever wondered and dreamed about him, the best you could imagine was true and in far beyond. Aren't you glad that you're saved, that you, that you know the Lord and that he claims you and that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life? Thank you, Master. Turn to Matthew 6. Let's just keep believing the Lord. I got some things here on my heart, but we'll just go wherever, wherever he leads. Can you say thank you, Lord? Matthew 6. We've been on this all this week. Matthew 6, he said in that passage, he said, uh, don't take any thought about what you'll eat and drink, what you'll wear. He said, consider the birds of the field. Consider the lilies. They don't worry. They don't punch a clock. They don't store up. And yet God feeds how many birds oh. worldwide? <laughs> oh, 
Birds are fed globally. <laughs> Aren't they? And none of them are worrying about where their next meal is coming from. Fields are clothed majestically. Flowers, greenery and shrubbery and trees and every season, new clothes. <laughs> That's what the ladies got excited about two nights ago. Every season. That's the exact, he's the one said, consider the lilies. Well, the lilies get new, I mean, the, the hillsides, they get new clothes every season. That's what he told us to think about. And he said, don't seek after all these things. Your father knows that you have need of all these things. But verse 33, Matthew 6, 33. But you do what? You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Say all these things. All these things, all these things shall be added to you and it'll be better than it's ever been. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, wouldn't it be? Yeah. You're seeking first the kingdom with all your heart and everything you ever needed and wanted has been added to you. Yes. I reckon that's better than it's ever been. Yes. And so we went to scriptures and we saw concerning the kingdom of God. A lot of people shout about all these things being added to you, but they don't focus on, that, that's not your part. That's not my part. Adding all the things to us, that's God's part. Have you found out you don't have to work on God's part? <laughs> he doesn't forget. He doesn't fail. Right? If he tells you, you do this and I'll do that, do you have to work on his part and remind him or encourage him or try to talk him? All you got to do is do your part. And he will, without fail, do what he told you he would do. And yet still, millions of Christians working on his part. <laughs> what, his part is to add all these things to us. What's our part? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's our part. Seek the kingdom of God. So we've talked some this week about the kingdom of God. Jesus taught and talked and preached extensively on the kingdom of God. He talked so much about it that his disciples were just primed about it. And the, and the Bible said they thought that the kingdom would immediately appear. And, and amongst themselves, they're talking about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. I mean, they were kingdom in the morning, kingdom in the afternoon, kingdom when the sun went down. Well, now, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he preached that then, and that was his emphasis and focus then, he hasn't changed. And yet a lot of people, a lot of the church has gotten away from this. And it is not unusual for babies to be self-focused and self-centered. And so, so many people, are, they study the scriptures and they look to the principles and things of God to find out what can I use of God's things to help me have a better life. And so people think primarily, I have to find out about faith and I find out about my authority and I find out about these things so I can be successful in my pursuit of success in life and in my career and in my family. That is a spiritual infant. Because when you grow up, you begin to realize this is not all about me. For his will and pleasure, I've been created. And all these things he's given me is not just so I can go out and do what I want to do in life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And as you grow up and mature, you realize I have all of this so I can say, not what can I use for my life, but Lord, here am I. Use me to advance your kingdom. What, what would you have me do? That's the maturing ones. 
growing up past the babyhood stage. And old friend, instead of having to confess, 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 confess for your car, for your house, for your jewelry, for your clothes, because you got it on your mind and you're reaching for that, you're not seeking for that. You know how to sow a seed. You know how to claim and believe what you need, what you want. But then you don't keep that on your mind all day and all night. You are seeking first the kingdom of God. It's kingdom business. I'm here on kingdom business. I must be about my father's business. Huh? Do you mean business? <laughs> Life is not just a vacation. You know, people say, well, when do I, you know, I, I got to have time for me and, and I need this and that. Hey, we can play later. That's right. <laughs> we, we have all kind of time to catch up. People say, well, I, I need to talk to this one and, and I miss them so much. And I, I reckon you can just fellowship with them for a hundred years when you get to heaven. <laughs> people say, well, I just feel like I'm, I'm, I'm missing out on this and that and this and that because we need to work, we need to do this. Listen. This is not the end. That's right. And if you, you know, if you got loved ones and you didn't get to do some things with them as much as you like and they're already in heaven, hey, they're not just in your past. They're in your future. And those things that you wanted to do with them, who said you're not going to still get to do them with them? Glory to God. No, no, no. But now it's time to work. It's time to put your hand to the plow and not look back and get after it and stay after it because we got a whole lot of harvest and not too many laborers and not much time. Hmm? We, can't, we can't afford to waste a day or an opportunity or a resource. So you have come unto the kingdom for such a time it's 2010. Hmm? And your area, and your, you could have been born any other time, any other place. God could have put you anywhere, but he put you here and now. And he made you for this time and for these environments and for this climate. You are, you may not realize it, I might not have realized it, but we are tailor made for this generation and these places and these times. God made us. This is our time. I, I can sense Peter and Paul and Moses and David and Elijah and Elisha leaning over the banister rail of heaven watching us. There was a time when they were on the front line. They have served their tour of duty and they're out of here. And rightly so, they served well. But it's our time. It's our time. It's our time. And we are, sometimes people want to cry and want to feel bad because we're down here and we've got to deal with the flesh and the devils and the curse and crazy people. But hey, this is where the action is. This is it. We are in the hot zone. <laughs> and yeah, it ain't safe. And yeah, there's a lot of junk happening, but we got great big angels and we got the greater one inside us and we got the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus and a family all around us that loves us and stand together and believe with us. Oh, friend, we ought not cry. We ought not complain. We ought not bellyache. We ought not be little... Uh, Whiny babies. We ought to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We ought to get up and hit it every day and go, Lord, here am I. I'm so thankful that you let me live here and now. Oh, Lord, show me what to take today. What can we take for the kingdom? How can we advance the kingdom of God? What's my mission? And if we'll think that way, we'll be about the master's business, about our father's business. It's sad that so many are just whiling away 
their years. That's true. Just the, going through the mundane routine of life. Cleaning and picking up and going and coming. and do, Acting like they're going to do this forever. And you're not. We're here for a very, very small window of time. And here's the good news. You still got some of it. Right. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. Aren't you? Yes. Whether it's a day or 10 years or 50 or 75, I don't know. But we still got some. That's right. I said I can almost hear Elijah and Elisha, Peter and Paul saying, all right, boy, don't play around. Paul saying, Keith, if I'd have had a jet airplane and the internet, <laughs> you know what? I, you know what I did with parchments and ships. Yeah. <laughs> if I'd have had a jet, <laughs> boy, you better get it. Get after it. Get while the getting's good. Come on now. The harvests are white. They're white over the planet, waving. Oh, come on. What needs to happen when the harvest are white? We need some of them great big John Deere combines. <laughs> huh? I mean big ones. Big ones. That when you start the engines, the ground rumbles. <laughs> We're not talking about two or three rows at a time. We're talking about taking out swaths that can be viewed from satellite. Yeah. Come on. Hey! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And just like no other generation has had technology like that to farm with in the earth until now. Also, no other generation has had technology to get in the spiritual harvest like the Lord has given until now. Glory to God. I mean, right now, by the internet, by these cameras, we got folks watching in, in possibly 80, 100 countries of the world. All over the world. I mean, how could you get to all these people? How many lifetimes would it take? to travel and try to get there and to preach this message. What a privilege. Yes. What, what an opportunity. Yes. And if you've prayed a prayer over it, if you've made a confession, if you've sown a dollar in it, you got a part of it. Right. you got a part of it. you got a piece of it. Can you say glory to God? Glory to God. Can God use us yes. to get this thing done, yes. to get this job accomplished? Yes. Say it out loud. Here am I. Here am I. Use me. Here am I. Use me. Here am I. Use me, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Mm -mm -mm. Go to John, please. John chapter 3. I'm having a challenge with these notes. <laughs> they don't say anything I'm saying. <laughs> None of that's in here. So. <laughs> and that's just fine. That's just fine. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what makes church, church? When he's here. Yes, sir. It just ain't church without him. Right? But he's here. Do you know he's here? He's here. I mean, he's on us. He's around us. He's in our midst. He's here talking to us, ministering to us, encouraging us expanding our insights, enlarging our vision, increasing us. Hallelujah. Somebody say better. 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 better
been, ever been better than it's ever been. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Did you find John 3? The kingdom of God. Seek that, he said. Seek it first. We said that word seek means to think about and to plot. To plot and think about. You know, whatever you put your mind on, you open your spirit to. The mind is the doorway to the spirit. And it's so important. Uh, it, it just hasn't been taught enough. It hasn't been emphasized enough how important it is what we have on our mind all the time. Do you know that? Yes. Some have not understood that. They thought, well, you know, as long as I don't say it and as long as I don't do it, then it's no big deal if I just, if I think about it. It is a big deal. Yes, it is. It's not okay. People think, well, if, if, if I'm not loose with my body, then I didn't, I didn't go too far. No, you can be loose with your mind. And you can let, just like you, there's certain places your body ought not be. There are places your mind ought not be. And if we would guard our minds, we'd never go to that other place. We, we wouldn't go too far. It, it would keep us safe. It would protect us from the poison and work of the enemy. The enemy tempted Jesus out in the wilderness those 40 days and nights. You remember that? Yes. And notice how, how Jesus used the word, but you can see he's using the word to hold his mind and to hold his uh, spirit in the right direction. Not let the enemy move him or, or, or preoccupy him or, or get him off track. We quoted this week a couple of nights ago from uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin used to say this all the time. He said, uh, if the devil can hold and keep you in the, the arena of reason... He'll defeat you every time. But if you'll keep him in the arena of faith, you'll defeat him every time. So if that's so and you can see it in the scriptures, then it's no wonder that the enemy is always trying to distract us, always vying for our mind time. And see, there's so many people have overestimated their own strength. And they've thought, well, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to look at it. And of course, if you're looking at it, what else are you doing? You're thinking about it. But I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to think about it. And as long as I don't do it, then I hadn't really gone too far. Well, that's not true. What did the Lord say about a man that looks on a woman to lust? Now, that's not just he, he, that he just looked and, and he thought, boy, she's nice looking. No, he, he chose to continue to look and think and imagine and fantasize and just yield to it. What did the Lord say about that? Had he missed it? As long as he didn't do it, did he miss it anyway, though? Did he, miss, he did miss it. He said he's, he's committed adultery with her in his heart. You might say, well, he didn't do anything. Jesus said he did. Right? That's right. right? That's right. Does it matter what we do with our mind? Oh, yes. Yes. It does. See, Adam and Eve, before they took the fruit and ate the fruit and committed the act, how did they get there? They're out there hanging around a tree, they got no business hanging around. Right? That's right. right? right. And they're out there looking at something and thinking about something they got no business looking at. 
and thinking, and I'm sure that they told themselves, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to look. But when you do that, you are already yielding. See, people don't realize. Well, I'm not going too far. You're, you're already yielding. You're already sliding. If you were really as strong as you thought you were, you wouldn't be there. You wouldn't have begun to yield. You know, the, uh, the writer of the Proverbs, you read about him telling his sons about the wayward woman. He said, don't go near the door of her house. What does that mean? Don't go down the street. Don't go by the house. Have you ever found out if you're wanting to lose a few pounds? It's easier to pass the grocery store than it is your cabinet? <laughs> huh? Have you found that out? It's easier. What do you mean? Well, if you go in there, I'm just going to look around. <laughs> and don't go in there hungry. Man, you'll come out with three baskets piled up. <laughs> and then if you bring it home and you put it in your fridge and you put it in the cabinet, how, what are you going to do now? <laughs> Wouldn't it have been easier just to drive on by? Yeah. Just turn your head and look the other way. Yes, <laughs> drive on by. Yeah. Wise people, people that are truly strong, are not the ones that toy with it. They're the ones that don't go down the street. Yeah. And other people imagine, well, yeah, but I'm, I'm strong and, and I know what I'm doing and, 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 and uh I'm not going to go too far, but I'm just, you know, for so I'll know how to pray about these things and how to counsel with people that are, that are in these situations. Yeah, that's the people we'll be counseling with <laughs> right away. <laughs> Said out loud, don't go, don't go near, near the door of her house. That's the temptation. Right? Don't be hanging around out there looking at it, thinking you're already yielding. You're already sliding. You got to do what Joseph did. <laughs> what did Joseph do? Anybody know? <laughs> Potiphar's wife. Must have been a looker. And she got her eye on Joseph. And so she's dressing improperly. And she's looking good. And she's smelling good. And she's hanging around. And she's getting too close. And, and he's, he's evaded her for months, I guess. And then one day, she's laying for him. Just attacked him. He didn't say, we got to sit down here on the side of the bed and talk about this. <laughs> no! Help me out. Help me out. What did he do? What did he do? He ran. He ran right out his coat. Didn't he? I mean, out of the coat. She's holding on to his clothes. Next thing she knows, she got an empty coat. Where'd he go? Trail of dust. <laughs> out the front door. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Just like there are certain places your body ought not be, there are places your mind ought not be. Right? And we must learn to discipline our minds. Go to, go to 2 Corinthians. I know I told you, John, but like I said, I'm having trouble with these notes. <laughs> these notes are not working tonight. <laughs> and I don't care. Second Corinthians, 10th chapter, are you there? 
2 Corinthians chapter 10. Amen. He said in verse 3, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Though we're in this world, we're not of this world, and we're not to be conformed to this world's way of thinking and operating, but by the word our minds are transformed and renewed. We, we think differently. We operate differently. We, we control our minds and our eyes and our words and our actions totally differently from unsaved people. They'll look at anything. They'll imagine and daydream and fantasize about anything. They'll, they'll talk anything in any kind of way. And they wind up in death and in sin and, and failure. But the Lord's taught us better. We're sons of the Most High God. We're to walk and follow Him and be imitators of God as dear children. How much of the time do you think God is thinking on the wrong thing? <laughs> Zero. Never is his mind where it ought not be. Ever. Always on the right thing at the right time. Aren't you glad? Amen. How about you needing a miracle and it never happened and God said, sorry, my mind was elsewhere. I just, I just drifted for a while there. What did you need? <laughs> Thank God. God's not like a lot of people. <laughs> well, you know, he needs us bringing our A game too. Doesn't he? He needs us at our best, fully functional, fully alert, fully aware. See, sin is not just about making you feel bad. It's about robbing you of your faith and preventing you doing your call and your plan, his plan, I should say, for your life. Jesus was tempted. It's not a sin to be tempted. Jesus himself was tempted. Hold your place here. Go to Luke 4. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Where's your mind? Where, where's your mind? <laughs> it ought to be here not, not somewhere else boy you know if everybody's forehead was a TV screen <laughs> and you could see what they were thinking about oh it'd be hard to preach oh man because you know at least you can pretend everybody's paying attention, you know. But how many know a lot of people can be looking straight at you and nodding and they're there, you know, lights are on. <laughs> but, but they're gone. I mean, they are gone somewhere else in their mind. And they can sit there for 30 minutes and go, <laughs> like those little bobblehead dogs in the back. Of <laughs> but they're not with you. They are not with you. <laughs> and that's a problem. <laughs> that's, that is not good. Phyllis and I uh, brought a young man into our home some years ago who's really going through some challenges and problems. And we endeavored to help him. And we brought him to church with us and, and just... Uh, you know, tried to get some word in him. You know, an environment makes a difference. Amen. And uh, we were at church one Sunday morning with this young man sitting oh, just a few rows back from the front. And the pastor, uh, I wasn't speaking that day, our pastor was speaking and, and he began on a fine message and just about five, ten minutes into his message, he changed and he walked over to our side of the uh, platform and he started talking about some things that was exactly what this young man was dealing with. It was the identification of the problem and it was the answer from the Word of God and what to do and what would happen. I mean, it was Holy Ghost. It was answer to prayer. Did you know this happens all the time in our services? You may not always see it and be aware, but it's happening. 
And man, I'm excited. But just, I mean, at virtually the same time that he started, there was some kind of little commotion in the back, not much. And this young man, very easily distracted, he turned around. All the way around, he's looking around. And, 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 and minutes are going by, and I'm thinking, he's missing this. He's not hearing a word of this. And I wanted to reach over there and get him. The Lord said, no, don't touch him. Leave him alone. Just watch this. And so the, the, the man of God talked about it for several minutes, and, and then he, he, he stopped and he walked back over, and he resumed where he was with this message. And the same time, this young man turned back around and looked at the front and did not hear one word of it, did not get it. This was a precious word straight from the Lord just for him. Out of all the people in there that morning, and as precious as service time is, and he had him stop what he was doing otherwise and come over there and stand right in front of him and say it, and he didn't get a word of it. Didn't get a word of it. And the Lord said, this happens all the time with my people. The devil is a master of distraction. And if you are weak-minded, what do you mean by that? You let your mind just flop anywhere, any thought. We need to develop powers of focus and concentration. If you're going to be a strong and mature spiritual man or woman, you must develop powers of focus and concentration. And then no matter what's going on, you know what's important and what's not important. And you tune in on what is important, and I mean you tune everything else out. And if the Lord's talking, you don't care if there's nine devils and an earthquake and five car wrecks. I'm getting this. And the devil is not going to distract me and cause me to miss what the Lord has for me. We were reading there in Corinthians, though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God. There, there is a warfare going on. There's a struggle going on. And many have imagined it being a different way than it is, but the very next couple of verses, he talks about imaginations. He talks about thoughts, doesn't he? Thoughts. Yeah, there's a warfare going on. It's between your ears. There's a vying for your mind. And the enemy, you talk about smoke and mirrors and razzle dazzle. And if, you're, if you don't control yourself, any little thing, you just follow it around. <laughs> and here's a thought. And here's something to look at. <laughs> you can live your whole life like that. Oh, there's something else. Oh, there's something else. And just missing God, missing God. You should have been getting direction for this. You should have been getting an answer on this. You should have, should have been seeing this. But oh, pretty. <laughs> Sparkly. It's true, isn't it? Where are you? Huh? Luke 4. The devil tempted Jesus 40 days, 40 nights. Remind yourself how he dealt with it because we deal with it exactly the, the same way. The Bible said, Luke 4, verse 3, the devil said to him, if you be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Bread. Hot. <laughs> Smells wonderful. And how long has it been since you had something to eat? Oh, Bread. Bread, bread, what did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone. 
I'm not going to think about bread. I'm going to think about the Word of God. And the Word of God feeds me. And the Word of God satisfies me. Friend, if you can control your mind, you can keep the enemy over in the realm of faith. He can't defeat you. He can't confuse you. He can't trick you. He can't trip you up. But if you'll listen to him and go, bread, <laughs> bread, I like bread. I really like bread. What kind of bread is it? <laughs> you're done. You're, you're toast. Can you see Jesus using the Word of God and using His mouth to control His mind and hold it right where it needs to be and absolutely not let the devil distract him or make you don't have to play the devil's game by his rules. Do you? Keep reading. The devil took him up into a high mountain, showed to him what? All, All the what? Kingdoms. All the what? Kingdoms of the world. Was this a real temptation to Jesus? Yes, yes it was. Why kingdoms? All right. this, is his, this is his destiny. Right. Right. He is the king of kings. kings. His is the kingdom to end all kingdoms. And his is to rule and dominion over all kingdoms in the everlasting kingdom. And the devil's showing him a shortcut. You want to rule and reign? No need going through the cross and all of that. You can be ruling and reigning this afternoon. showed him all the kingdoms of the whole world in a moment of time. This is a spectacular spiritual experience that involves all the senses. He see, you talk about glitter. You talk about power and distraction. Imagine all the glory of all, all the military might, the wealth, every gold crown, every throne, every splendor, all the ability that goes with it. And the devil is, I mean, he is pulling out the stops, brother. He's showing him everything he can. And he said, verse 6, all this power I will give you. Now some people have tried to say, he couldn't do it. Then it wouldn't have been a temptation. I believe the Lord would have known that. Don't you? So, apparently he could. You know the Bible calls him the God of this world. All this power I will give you and the glory of all of them for it's been delivered to me. Well, who gave it to him? Yeah, man. Grandpa. <laughs> would you have done any better? No need to hesitate, let me tell you. <laughs> Have you sinned? Have you ever sinned? Then that's what he did. So no need in us throwing rocks at, at him. The, the glory of them for that is delivered to me and whomsoever I will, I give it. And that's still continuing to this day. Verse 7, If you therefore will worship me, all will be yours. Is this a battle? I said, is this a battle? And there's no screaming. There's no hollering in tongues. No camouflage suits and no army boots. 
but it's a battle going on. I mean a raging battle. What's it about? You talk about lights and mirrors. You talk about, he, he is, he's showing him every glittery, powerful, desirable thing in the whole world of authority and ruling and reign, being in control, being in power, having everything you could imagine naturally and physically. And he's, he's warning him, look at this, look at this. You can have it now. Now, just fall down. Worship me. I'll give it all to you right now. Now. What is it critical that you do right now? You don't let your mind go where he wants it to go. You, you don't. Can you afford to think about this, to consider it, even for what it might be like? You can't, you can't afford to even consider it for a moment. It's too dangerous. If you do, you're already yielding. You're already sliding. If you just consider it for a moment. No. Jesus immediately responded to him. What did he say? Help me out. What did he say? Is he playing with this thing? Is he No. Get behind me, Satan. Because it is written, you'll worship the Lord your God and him only shall you worship. In other words, no way, no how. I'm not thinking about it for a moment. Never going to happen. Yes, sir. Was he in control of his mind yes. and his words? Yes. Can you do that? Yes. You got the same Holy Ghost yes. in you yes. that was in him and on him. Yes. You're made in his likeness and image. The devil will tell you you can't help but think on it. It's a lie. Yes. The devil will tell you you can't help but be immersed in God. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Your mind is your mind. You can think on what you want to think on. You, can, you do not have to let it go. Now, uh, there's a lot to distract and to tempt. And sometimes, if you hadn't been controlling yourself, you'll catch yourself going that way again. But when you realize it, grab your mind and get your mouth in gear and say, no, no, no. I refuse to look. I refuse to think. And you'll be safe. And you won't even come close to falling or falling again. Why is this so important? Keep reading. Keep reading. He brought him to the pinnacle of the temple. He said, if you be the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written. Oh, the devil thinks he's so smart. Because how did Jesus, you know, shut him down the last two times? It is written. So now what's the devil going to do? Oh, he can quote scriptures too. So he's going to quote Jesus one. <laughs> It's written, he'll give his angels charge over you to keep you. And in their hands, they'll bear you up. Unless you, at any time, you dash your foot against a stone. And he didn't know who he was messing with, I guess. Because Jesus said, it is said, another said, it is also written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. I'm telling you, for 40 days and 40 nights, this kind of thing went on. And the devil did every, you know, he did, I don't think he started with all the kingdoms of the world and all the glory. He's running out of stuff to do. He, he, this is, this is everything he can do. And the Bible said, the devil ended all the temptation. He departed from him for a season. He ran out of stuff to do. He couldn't get Jesus to entertain it for a moment. He couldn't get him to toy with it or to play with it at all. Jesus just shut him down with the word and wouldn't think about it and wouldn't look at it. That's it. And it wouldn't matter if the devil would have sung about it and hollered and jumped up and down and tried to show it to him for the next five years. He's not going to change. And he knew that. So he finally just gave up and quit and left him for a season. Tried, didn't say he left him for good. But he's trying to re regroup and figure out what to do. Now here's what, we, what we're getting to. The next verse, what does it say? And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Oh, somebody say power of the Spirit. Power. Say it again, power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. See, this is not just about getting you to sin and making you feel bad. The Bible said if our heart condemns us not, then... 
have we confidence toward God? Well, what if your heart is condemning you? You don't have confidence. You, the, the rug is pulled out from under your faith. It is so sad that there are ministers, men and women, all over this country, all over the world tonight, that hadn't done anything in ministry for years, and they got the most wonderful call on their life, some of the most amazing graces and gifts in them. But they messed up. They didn't control their mind, and they didn't control their eyes and their mouth and their body and their, their desires, and they messed up. And now they're so condemned that they just don't believe God could use them, and they said, don't even try. And so even though there's all that anointing and that grace in them and available to them, it's like they're not even called. Because no matter what kind of call is on your life, unless you mix some faith with it, there'll be no manifestation of it. And faith without works is dead. You could have the most amazing call to speak or to preach or lay hands on the sick or to sing, but it'll never show up if you never sing or if you never preach, or if you never lay hands on somebody, and this is the in intent of the devil, is to get you and I to sin and to fall and to feel so bad and so dirty and so useless and so messed up that we don't even try. And if you do, he has in effect shut down that gift and prevented that anointing from manifesting. Because he's scared of the anointing. I said he's scared of the anointing. That's not just talk and hype. He is scared of the anointing. Why? Because the anointing destroys, yokes, removes. I mean, rips them right off and flings them into outer space. Burdens, and he just happens to be in the yoke and burden business. And he'll work sometimes for years trying to get somebody all yoked up and in terrible bondage, even generation to generation. And the anointing of God is so mighty, it can come into a person's life and in milliseconds shatter and disintegrate what the devil took decades to make happen. So he does anything he can to keep this anointing from ever manifesting are ever showing up. And one of the most effective ways is the same thing he did with Jesus. Tempt, 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 tempt. Why? Because if you sin, he knows your confidence is going to be gone and you're not going to step out. So he has in effect defused that gift and that anointing. Oh, but good news. Good news. No matter how grievous the sin, no matter how dark the deed, there is the blood of the Lamb that can cleanse and wash all sin. People say, yeah, but preacher, you, you don't know what I did. You don't know what I've been, yeah, and you don't know how powerful that blood really is. It doesn't matter. We sing the song, it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. Hallelujah. There's nowhere and that blood can't reach. There's no sin that blood can't cleanse. And if you're clean, you're clean. Somebody say, if you're clean, you're clean. If you're clean, if, you, if you're forgiven, you're forgiven. If you're clean, you're clean. And if you're forgiven and you're clean, it's as though it had never been. Which means, hello, you're back in action. Come on now, you're a, you're anointing can be manifested again. Right. Well, they don't want to hear me. Well, go somewhere where they do. Yes, <laughs> but don't lay down and say, I can't, because his precious gifts, his precious callings are without repentance. He does not change. No matter what you've done, he does not change. But this time, 
Don't be a fool. Right. When something flitters by, you don't go, ooh, pretty. And he says, bread, money, girl. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. No, God loves you. And any good and right desire you have, trust him. He'll take care of you. In the right time and the right way, he satisfies the desires of every living creature. Doesn't the scripture say so? He fills the longing soul. He does with goodness. Everybody stand up on your feet. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. I want us to sing, guys, all oh, the blood of Jesus. everyone if you're going to walk with him and not be held down and held back anymore you have to mean business you have to be serious about this nobody's going to control your mind for you if you don't do it it won't be done and a number of people need to remove themselves from situations where they're so tempted and they need to remove some things out of their house that are so tempting to them and there's no substitute for that you need to do it and I don't mean tomorrow immediately because it's a key to you continuing to fall in that same area The Lord loves you. He's not against you. He wants to help you. But you gotta give him something to work with. He will help you as you do something. As you make the effort to control your mind, he will help you control your mind. But if you do nothing and cry, help me, you're not saying help me, you're wanting him to do it for you. That's not how it works. Everybody, lay your hands on your head. Say it out loud, my mind is my mind. I can think whatever I choose to think. I can choose not to think on whatever I choose not to think. I don't have to think on anything I choose not to. My mind is my mind. I have powerful weapons. The Word of God. The name of Jesus. The faith of Jesus. The greater one inside. And I am well able to cast down imaginations and every evil thought and every wrong thought that exalts itself above and against the knowledge of God. I keep my mind 
stayed on him. And he keeps me in perfect peace. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, sing it again. of God he said if you'd confess your sin doesn't matter what it is just your sin if you'll confess your sin he is faithful somebody say faithful and he is just to forgive me of all sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness he is that good. He is that great. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the blood of again now sometimes when you talk about these things people think of thoughts about the opposite sex or sexual thoughts that's just the tip of the iceberg thinking thoughts of fear are evil yielding to depression and self pity is evil you'll be tempted but do not thou yield Every thought that is contrary to your victory in Jesus, every feeling that is contrarywise to what Christ has bought and given must be grabbed and thrown to the ground. And you must say, I will not, I will not think on that evil thing. I will not. I'll not be depressed. Somebody say, I'll not be depressed. I'll not be, depressed. I'll not be, afraid. I'll not be afraid. I refuse, I refuse. To, feel to feel sorry for myself. I cast these things to the ground. They're evil. They're, evil. They're ungodly. ungodly. And I will not think on them. Oh, the blood. in his presence. He's ministering to people, cleansing people, washing minds, cleansing spirits and bodies. Oh, yes, he can. I say, oh, the blood of Jesus, 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 oh, the blood of oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus,
hallelujah 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 oh just praise him and thank him and give him glory hallelujah hallelujah oh lord i praise you oh i praise praise you and I've got peace like a river I've got Listen for a moment. Some that have uh, forgotten about their call haven't even tried to serve the Lord in that capacity for some time, years. You need to tell the Lord yes tonight that you're willing to take it back up. Not let the devil defeat you and and deprive the body of the call and the gift that he's put in you and on you. You need to tell him, yes, Lord, I'll believe that you really have forgiven me. Somebody say it out loud. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, believe I believe you really have forgiven me. Really and you really have cleansed me. Really and I'm as clean by the blood, as if I had never made that mistake. And if you're willing to use me, I'm willing to be used. Wherever, with whoever, however, I'll not be ashamed and be afraid. I will step up Step out. Step out. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise you, Lord. Just praise him some more. Restoration of place, restoration of grace, restoration of anointing, restoration.
workers come down if you would. I got peace with my God, peace with myself, peace with my call and anointing. Peace about the past, cause it's under the blood. I got peace that passes understanding. I got the peace that the world can't give. I got peace like a river in my. Everybody, lift up your voice. Oh, I've got peace like a river. in the building. We don't know who's watching by internet. But how many think everybody ought to be saved and know the Lord and leave this life and go straight to be with Him? So let's everybody affirm or reaffirm our faith watching by internet. I don't care where you are. If you're in an internet cafe, doesn't make any difference or an office or a bedroom. I want you to stand up right now and step towards your screen and everybody in here said out loud, Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus, that he died on the cross. He paid the full price for all my sins. His precious blood has washed them all away. Jesus, I confess you, Lord of my life, Lord over me, thank you for saving me, receiving me, washing me, forgiving me. I am yours and you are mine and I will live for you all the time. Hallelujah. Yeah. Everybody say